Hello friends, welcome to Shikshati. In this video, we will be discussing numbers and under the head of numbers, we will be discussing factors and multiples. So, let's start. Now, you, as you are aware of the fact that we have already done videos on numbers, you are expected to go through each and every video on numbers when we are talking about numbers because every video has a connect between them okay so now we are going to do a series of videos in which we will be talking about factors and multiples so we will basically start off with factors and multiples and then we will be talking about HCF, LCM factors, total number of factors sum of all the factors of a given number and thereon so which is why we will be doing a series of videos on factors and multiples Okay, now in the very beginning, uh, before we begin the discussion for all these things, there are a few points that I have written here. So starting off with this, anywhere if I am writing a number z, as discussed earlier also in my earlier videos, z means that I am talking about an integer. Plus z means plus integer, a positive integer, minus z means a minus integer, a negative integer. When I am writing w, w means a whole number and we know whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. N capital N wherever I am writing or discussing that means I am talking about a natural number and natural numbers are basically counting numbers and the counting numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Okay, so these are few things that we will be discussing in our series other than these we will be focusing on the factors and the byproducts of factors and multiples. Starting off the discussion with not in this order starting off the discussion with the discussion on what are factors and what are multiples? So, point number one, though I have discussed this thing in my video on fractions, but I'm discussing it once again because I feel that remainders or this divisibility theorem or remainder theorem, I mean, I can call it either ways. Either this is a theorem on divisibility or it is a remainder theorem. It becomes a theorem on divisibility only when the remainder becomes equal to a zero. Okay. So, dividend is the number that needs to be divided by a divisor such that you get a question and thereon you get a remainder. What I mean to say here is if I am performing a division, so I write the dividend first. Now dividend is written like this and then you are dividing it by a concerned divisor. Here you write the question. Here you get some answer when I multiply the divisor with the question, I get something here. So let us say this is the result that you get here. And then you subtract it from the dividend and here then you get the remainder. Okay, for example, I'll take a very easy example here. If I'm dividing 13 by 4, can I say that the question here is 3? The product that I get here, the result is nothing but the product that you are getting. This is 4 into 3 is a 12. When you subtract this, you get the remainder as 1. At the same time, when I am dividing, uh, dividing a number by 4, let's say I am dividing 13 by 4. I could have written what? I can write this is 4 into 4, 16. Now this number becomes greater than this. Now 13 minus 16 is how much? Minus 3. So, the point to be learnt from here is when I am dividing, so the very first point that I need to learn from here is dividend which is denoted by capital D is equal to small d into small q plus small r where capital D is my dividend, small d is my divisor, small q is the question and small r is the remainder. Now, there is a small table that I have drawn there. And I have taken the divisor as 4. So when I am dividing a number by 4, let's say a dividend by 4, what are the positive remainder possibilities? So cap small r, we are talking about the positive remainder possibility. So either you will get a remainder as 0, which is a non-positive and non-negative, or you get a remainder plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. At the same time, you can get a negative remainder also. For example, here, when I was dividing 13 by 4, I got a positive remainder as plus 1. At the same time, we could have written the negative remainder as minus 3. So, if I am getting a positive remainder as plus 3, at the same time, negative remainder becomes minus 1, plus 2, then minus 2, plus 1, minus 3. 
zero means you are getting remainder as minus four. Meaning thereby, I mean, what am I given to understand from here? Can I say the positive remainder is nothing but the divisor plus the negative remainder? Please remember this formula. Now, what is the negative remainder concept as discussed earlier also? Negative remainder concept does not exist in reality. It has been made to exist so that it can play a role of a facilitator. I mean, it helps you. I mean, when we talk about questions on remainder theorem or we talked about units digit or we talk about the last two digits of a number, we will see that we'll be using both the positive remainder concept as well as the negative remainder concept to help us out in the calculations. Right. Okay. So. Now, when I take the dividend as D and when I'm dividing a number by four, the positive remainder possibilities are zero, one, two, three is just like saying the remainder, the positive remainder will always vary from a zero to a D minus one. What is small D? The divisor. So the positive remainder possibilities when you're dividing a remainder by four starts from zero and ends on three is what I'm talking about. And what about the negative remainder possibilities? The negative remainder possibility starts from a minus one and ends where? On minus D. Okay, so can I say at the same time, the negative remainder possibility starts from a minus one. Now, how can it start from a minus one? It'll start from a minus D and it ends on minus one. I repeat. A positive remainder, what is the minimum possibility of a remainder? The minimum possibility of a remainder is zero. Next one. So remainders will always be whole numbers or remainders will always be non-negative integers. Another way to understand this. Similarly, when I'm talking about a negative remainder, the negative remainder, the maximum value of a negative remainder is what? Minus one. And the minimum value of a negative remainder is minus times the divisor itself. Right? So negative remainder means what? Negative remainders, we are basically talking about negative integers. And when we are talking about positive remainders, we are basically talking about non-negative integers. When I say non-negative integers, we are basically talking about zero as a neutral integer and then we are talking about positive integers. Okay, taking this discussion forward, when I'm dividing a number by D, so here, this is the first expression that I can use. And this is the second expression that I can use if I am writing it in terms of a negative remainder concept. Please relate the same discussion that I'm doing it with you. 13 can be written as four into three plus one, which is just like saying D into small q plus R, where small r is your positive remainder. And at the same time, 13 can be written as d into q dash minus r dash so for example the value of d here remains the same as 4 4 into 4 minus 3 please relate this is what i am talking about when i say that a dividend can be written in the format of dq plus r or we can write it as d into q dash minus r dash is what we are talking about I hope you have understood this as suggested in other videos also if there is something which you are not understanding you can revisit the topic once again you can re-watch it so that the second time when you do the same thing it becomes easier and the very first time when you are doing something you don't understand something is very natural but if you are not doing it again having known the fact that you have not understood that is not expected from you okay okay so can I put it this way now the here talking about in this case Q will be a whole number, yes, and remainder will be what a non negative integer. So either it will be zero or it will be a positive integer. Similarly, here Q dash will be either a natural number, I mean, Q dash will be a natural number, and R dash will be a negative integer, which we have already discussed. The only thing is, I'm writing it in, in a set builder format. E is element belongs to. Okay, now taking this discussion forward, the first case that I can make here is what if the remainder is zero? then can I say D becomes equal to capital D, which is dividend is equal to small d into small q. Now, in this case, you need to understand that 
d small d and small q become the fa factors of capital d in other terms can i say capital d becomes a multiple of the small d and small q yes and here you need to understand that d into q means d and q in short what are we saying we are saying this capital d is divisible both by d and q in short now what is this d this capital d this capital d could be a prime number now if i were to relate this topic with the topic that we have already done on prime numbers and composite numbers even numbers and odd numbers now had this been written as 1 into d only in that case d becomes prime now if it can be written in any one more way i mean when i am talking about the product if i can write down d as d into 1 and i can write down one more way one more way here refers to if i can write down capital d as d into q at the same time i can write it as 1 into d in that case capital d becomes what a composite number correct so in a certain way now we are talking about the divisibility rule of this capital d where this capital d i am assuming it to be a composite number because i am writing it in the format of d into q which is not 1 into d only i hope it is understood okay next part here is what if if the remainder is not equal to 0 if the remainder is not equal to 0 in that case the remainder has to be a natural number or a positive integer so in that case how will you write this this expression remains the same i mean this equation remains the same which equation are we talking about capital d is equal to d into q plus r mind the word equation being used that means remainder theorem equations ratios proportions all these things they go hand in hand even series geometric series and arithmetic series all these topics they go hand in hand okay okay once you have understood this the next point that we are going to discuss here is we are going to talk about the divisibility rule rules of some numbers and which are the numbers that we have selected here we have selected a 2 4 8 in short we have selected natural number powers of 2 or we'll be talking about 5 or powers of 5 or we'll be talking about some other numbers some other numbers like 3 9 6 8 12 and so on now there are few numbers that i'm going to underline here there are few numbers that i have underlined and the remaining numbers i have not underlined so the numbers which i have underlined can you guess which numbers are these i hope you guessed it correctly so the numbers that we have underlined here are we are talking about prime numbers and the numbers which have not been underlined here are composite numbers okay so we are going to talk about the divisibility rules of some prime numbers and some composite numbers though even if you do not know the divisibility rules what is the best way of finding out i mean whether it is divisible or not divide it in this way and find out whether it is divisible or not whether the divisor is a prime number or the divisor is a composite number understood okay okay so now when we are talking about 2 what is the divisibility rule for 2 i mean it should just divide so either it will be divisible by 2 or it will give you a remainder 1 have i written it correctly keeping in mind that now when i am using plus remainder format i need to write it as a whole number okay so can i write it like this now what is the divisibility rule for 2 now this is divisible and 2 w plus 1 means what this is not divisible by 2 not divisible means it is giving a remainder 1 which is why you would see in this table tick mark symbolizes what you are getting remainder as zero and cross signifies what you are getting some remainder some remainder means you are talking about a non negative non zero remainder non negative and non zero remainder is what we are talking about okay so this is the divisibility rule for 2 now what is the divisibility rule for 4 as i discussed earlier if you do not know the specific divisibility rules you can simply divide it by that number and see as to what is the remainder whether it is divisible or not divisible means that the remainder is zero not divisible means it is giving a non zero but positive remainder okay 
may be negative also but we know that negative is a is a pseudo concept it is not a negative remainder is a pseudo concept it is not a real concept okay so now 4 is what 4 if i have to break it up into its factors i'll say 4 is a 2 square how much is 8 8 is a 2 cube so this power decides for example if i have to check whether the number 133 is divisible by 2 or not i need to simply check the units digit and i'll say no it is not divisible if it is not divisible it will always give a remainder as 1 the same number 133 if I had to check it with a 4 and I know that 4 has 2 powers of 2 in it. So this power decides how many digits from the right hand side. Right hand side means units, thereafter tens, thereafter hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, lakhs and so on. So here we will be choosing the last two digits. Now when we see this we will simply divide 33 by 4. So we will say 4 into 8. Is a 32 so the remainder is 1 so we will simply say what the divisibility rule for 4 is what checking the last two digits of the given number if it is divisible the remainder will be 0 else whatever the remainder is the same would have been the remainder if you would have divided the entire number by 4 right now what is the divisibility rule for it using the same logic I can say what 2 is what I mean 8 is what? 8 is a 2 cube. So how many powers of 2 are present in 8? There are 3 powers of 2 which are present in 8. So if somebody would have asked me check whether 133 is divisible by 8 or not, how many digits would I check? I'll check for the last 3 digits. So it is just like saying 133 divided by 8. I'll check. So is it divisible by 8? No. How much is the remainder? 5. How many remainder possibilities will you get when you divide a number by 8? You will get remainder possibilities starting from a 0 to a 7. So in total how many remainder possibilities? 8 remainder possibilities. So whenever you are dividing, in remainder theorem, whenever you are dividing it by a divisor d, how many remainder possibilities will you get? You will get d possibilities. Keeping in mind that the minimum value of the remainder is 0. And the maximum value of the remainder is d minus 1. Now the moment you say d remainder possibilities is what you are going to get. Keep in mind that you are talking about remainder being 0 also and you are talking about the remainder being positive also. You are talking about all the remainder possibilities which are 0 also and non-zero but positive. Okay. The same logic we are going to use for 5. Now 5 is how much? 5 to the power 1. 25 is how much? It's just like saying 5 square. 125 is how much? It's just like saying 5 cube. So what will you check? You will check for those many powers from the right hand side. So now 5 to what is the divisibility rule for 5 to the power n where capital N is a natural number? Last n digits is what you are going to check. So if somebody asks me whether 133 is divisible by 25 or not, I will not divide the entire number. I know that 25 is a 5 square. I will select for the last two digits which is just 33. So I just divide 33 by 25 and I come to know, come to know that it is not divisible and the remainder is 8. I hope this has been understood. Okay, taking this forward. Now, if somebody gives me a number like... and wants to know whether this number is divisible by 3 or not. So all you need to do here is you just need to keep on adding these digits and see both in case of 3 and 9 whether they the summation of the digits, the addition of the digits, if it is a multiple of 3 then it is divisible. If the summation of digits is a multiple of 9 then it is divisible by 9 else for I mean else it will give you a remainder if it is not divisible. So for example how much is 7 plus 5? 12, 18, 26. 34, 42, is 42, now 42 further can be written as 4 plus 2 which is 6. So is 6 divisible by 3? Yes. So you can say that this number is divisible by 3 but 6 is not divisible by 9. So this number is divisible by 3 but at the same time this number is not divisible by 9. Now to cut short this process, one way is you can add up all the digits and you can find out whether the summation of the digits is a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 9 henceforth 
you can find out whether it is divisible by 3 or it is divisible by 9. Okay. Now, to cut short this process, you can do what? If I am looking for whether this number is divisible by 3 or not, I can just strike out the multiples of 3. For example, 6 is a multiple of 3, I strike it out. 7 plus 5, 12, which is 3 only, I strike it out. Now, 8 is just like saying remainder is how much? If I divide 8 by 3, it's just like saying remainder 2 from here, remainder 2 from here, remainder 2 from here, which is just like saying 6. So in short, the number is divisible by 6. Why did I ask you to do this? Because this helps you to save, save time. I hope you are understanding why this is being suggested. Okay. Now, can I say a number which is divisible by 9 will necessarily be divisible by 3? But a number which is divisible by 3 may not be divisible by 9. And what is the logic that I am using here? The logic I am using here is now 9 is a multiple of 3. Can I say 9 is equal to 3 into 3? So a number which is divisible by the multiple will always be divisible by the factor. But a number which is divisible by the factor may not be divisible by the multiple. So from here you get something very very important. Now what is the important part here? The multiple is always greater than the factor which you know in any case. Now this point is very very important. Please focus on this. Now coming down to some of the questions here. So here everything 8 we have already done. So 8 I am not selecting here. 10 is just like saying what? Write down the prime factorization of 10. It's just like saying 2 into 5. Please relate. So can I say a number which is divisible by 10 will be divisible both by 2 and 5. 2 and 5. Please recall I said what? If D capital D is a multiple of D into Q, I'll say what? A number which is divisible by both D and Q is divisible by capital D. And a number which is divisible by D, which is capital D, will be divisible both by D and Q, which is small d and small q. So now this becomes the divisibility rule for 10. Now this divisibility rule for 10 is decided by what? Is decided by two numbers. Which are these two numbers? 2 and 5. Same logic, you can use it for 12 now. Now, how much is 12? 12 can be written as 2 square into 3. Now, what is the logic that you are supposed to use here? Please ensure that the number, the, div the dividend that has been given to you should be written in terms of two prime factors if possible and their concerned powers. I said if possible. Now, in that case, the divisibility rule becomes what? this number and this number so what what do i mean to say here is if i can write down that 12 is a product of two prime numbers and their concerned powers can i say now this is nothing but 4 and 3 so a number which is divisible both by 4 and 3 is a number which is divisible by 12 and a number which is divisible by 12 henceforth has to be divisible both by 4 and 3 is the logic that is we are being we are using here I'll take a special case here now. Let us say somebody asks me what is the divisibility rule for 30. So the dividend that has been given to you is a 30. So can I say 30 can be written as 2 to the power 1 into 3 to the power 1 into 5 to the power 1. Yes. Now once you have written this, you will say what? A number which is divisible by 30 is a number which has to be divisible by 2 and 3 and 5. But you know that you have to convert it basically into 2. Why into 2? Because one of them becomes the divisor and the other one becomes what? The question. So I can combine any two of them. So when I am combining any two of them, what can I say? 6 and 5. Or I can say what? 10 and 3. Or I can say what? 2 and 15. So what is the divisibility rule for 30? A divisibility rule for 30, I can say either this or this or this. And then you see which one is most, you know, acceptable one. For example, this you can say is the most acceptable one. This is nothing like most acceptable, but the one which is generally used. Otherwise, I can use any one of the three given the fact if I know how to do it. Similarly, you can say it for 96. Now 96 can be written as 2 to the power 5 into 3 which is just like saying a number what is the divisibility rule for 96 
the divisibility rule for 96 is nothing but a number which is divisible both by 32 and 3. Now what is the divisibility rule for 32? You can use it from here. So 32, if I have to check whether a number is divisible by 32, I just need to check for the last 5 digits. Why last 5? Because 32 is nothing but 2 to the power 5. I hope this point has been fairly understood. So, if somebody asks me, what is the divisibility rule for 11? So, what is the divisibility rule for 11? So, let us take a number here. So, if somebody gives me a number like 1, 2, 3, 4. So, how do I check for the divisibility rule for 11? If you can just tell me. Okay, this is just like saying, Please use the same symbols as I am using and this I am asking you to subtract. So how much is 2 minus 1? You get it as 1. Right? How much is 4 minus 3? You get it as 1 again. Add both of them. How much do you get? 2. 2 is a remainder. Please check when you divide. Now forget the rule that I have discussed here. If you divide this entire number by 11, let's check it out. 11 into 1 is 11, you get the remainder as 1, 13. So 1, 3 is 13. 11 into 1, 11. So 13 minus 11, you get it as, how much is 13 minus 11? 24. 11 into 2 is how much? 22. So 24 minus 22 is 2. So the answer that you got here is correct. So here you got the even number of digits. Let us say if somebody would have given you a number like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You have odd number of digits. Make the number of digits as even and then you do the same thing as suggested. Subtract. So how much is 1 minus 0? 1. How much is 3 minus 2? 1. How much is 5 minus 4? 1. Now in the second step, you are just supposed to add this and you get the answer as 3. So if you would have divided this entire number by 11 by the conventional method of division, you would have got the same remainder by this unconventional method which we have discussed here. So if you feel that something knowledgeable has been discussed in this video, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. If you have already done so, click on the bell icons and select all so that you start receiving the updates regularly. Thank you so much. Until next time we meet. Goodbye.